Occasionally, I have the need for an email server in my lab environment to test other third-party applications. I mean, these apps may want to send email notifications uh, or alerts. Uh, the email server allows me a way to test these apps from end to end. That is to say, I'm able to trigger alerts and then validate that, yes, the email was sent and it is something that I can open up. Now, the email server I typically will use is a, a very lightweight, open source, uh, runs on Windows, uh, only takes a few minutes to set up, which is the nice thing about it, and not uh, very complicated at all to, uh, to set up. So having said that, what we're going to be doing is installing what's called HMail Server. I just did a Google lookup on it and took me to this page here, you see. I'm going to go ahead and go to the uh, Download HMail Server. And from that, download the HMail Server 5.6.5. And I'm going to save it to my desktop. And that's it. Again, very uh, quick, very lightweight. And I'm going to go ahead and right click it and run as administrator. Accept pretty much the defaults as we go through this. So next, and accept the license agreement. Next, accept the location. Next, full installation. Next, use the built in database engine. Next, uh, start menu item, HMail server password. The password will be the new password to access the actual HTML server management console. So I'll make one up, confirm it, next, install. Fairly quick install, so I'm not even going to pause the video. We'll just let it complete here. And we'll leave the checkbox ticked off here. Uh, run HML Server Administrator and finish. We're going to connect the local host. That's our local machine here we just installed the software on as administrator. And connect. This is the password that we just created. And we're into the management console here. Now, in the management console, one of the first things we're going to do is add a domain. This will be the suffix portion that's appended to the user's email address. The domain I'm going to use is actually the Active Directory domain that this mail server and clients are in that I'm going to be testing. So this will be called training.lab. Save and create some user accounts. So I go up to the accounts area here and select add. Add our first user. We'll call him user1. Password. Leave the rest default and save. Go up to accounts. Add a second user. and a password. And we're done. So we have our email software installed, two user accounts created, and again in my lab environment testing these might be service accounts that I'll use as opposed to uh, the generic user1, user2 type of accounts. But again this is just the demo so I can show you how I set this up. So I'm going to go over to a uh, Windows 8.1 machine that's what you see on the screen now. And I'm logged in as user 1. I'm going to launch Outlook and configure this to talk to the email server. So do we want to configure this to handle email? Well, of course. So next, we're going to do a manual configuration for our email. Next, internet email. Next, name, that's user1, and the email address, user1 at training.lab. I'm going to leave it alone at pop3, 
an incoming mail server. That's the actual name of the server that we installed that email software on. And that server was called trn-mail.training.lab. Copy and paste this into the next field. Since it's going to be handling all of our email locally, username, this is what's used to actually log into the email server to retrieve the emails, and that's going to be user1 at training.lab. And the password that we had assigned and created to this user. And before we test, we're going to click more settings. The outgoing mail server will be the same as the incoming. So we're going to say my outgoing server SMTP requires authentication and use the same settings as my incoming mail server. Select OK. Now we're going to test. Green check, green check, so everything looks good there. Close. Select next. Repeats the test. And close and then finish. So Outlook opens up. Since this is the first time, it wants the abbreviation for our initials. And gives us the welcome. For now I'm going to say don't make changes, just say OK. And we should see eventually those test messages pop in. There they are. So there we go. This is an email message sent automatically by Microsoft Outlook while testing. So uh, this is the setup for user 1. I'm going to go to a second Windows 8 machine and do the same thing for user 2. So what we'll do eventually here is to send an email back and forth between user 1 and user 2 once this is set up. Okay, first time running so we get the prompts here. Select next. Yes, next. Manually configure. Select next. Internet email. Next. This is going to be user 2. And user2 at training.lab incoming mail server I had that still on my clipboard from the other screens so I'm pasting it in there. Again the name of the server is trn-mail.training.lab using the fully qualified name here Login for this user to that mail server is user2 at training.lab and password that we had created for that user when we created them. Go to more settings, outgoing server, my outgoing server SMTP requires authentication and use same settings as my incoming mail server. Select OK and let's test. Green check, green check, good. Everything looking healthy. Select next, it repeats, close, and finish. And again, once the abbreviation or initials, select OK. And I should get that welcome screen again. Don't bother making changes and my two email messages that I got. Now, let's do this. Let's send from user 2, that's the machine we're on now, 
an email to user1. So, new email, we'll send that to user1 at training.lab. Test email. Did you get this question mark? Send. Okay, we'll jump over to user one. Do a quick send and receive. And there's our email from user two. So we'll open that up. Did you get this? So let's reply back. Yes, got it, and send it. Close. Go back over to our user2 machine. Do a quick send receive, and there it is. Yes, got it. Okay, there you go. Again, a uh, setup of a very simple email server for your lab environment. It allows you to test third-party apps that may have uh, email functionality built into them for alerting, uh, sending messages, things of that nature. So this provides a very simple way to validate that that functionality exists and works the way you think it should work. And again, uh, no messing with the DNS settings at all to speak of because everything is kept local to the machines. These three PCs that we went through and are in the same domain. So very simple setup here. So with that, I'll, I'll leave you. Uh, keep in mind that if you wanted to use this type of software, this HTML server for internet type email functionality, it certainly can do that. There are other YouTube videos out there that you can take a look at to uh, learn that. So. Meanwhile, I'll leave you at this and uh, enjoy.